Like kids digging through closets trying to figure out where their parents hid their Christmas presents, fans have been searching for clues on how the mutants will join the MCU. And the answer might just be celestial. The MCU is full of accidents of science. On purposes of science, aliens and people just really good at what they do. But there's always been one glaring hole, one missing element that has made Marvel what it is since their introduction in 1963, mutants. The answer to how those born into superpowers will be born into the MCU might be in an unexpected place, the Eternals movie. The Eternals are the next big gamble for the seemingly unstoppable juggernaut that is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Jack Kirby creation isn't the best known of heroes, even among comic book fans, but the MCU have been turning seemingly B and C listers into mega hits since Iron Man privatized the world peace in 2008. I mean, they have made a talking space raccoon everybody's favorite character, so. Oh, yeah. Part of the reason that the MCU has been taking characters off their deep bench and putting them in the game is because prior to the MCU, Marvel had a garage sale for the rights to their most popular characters in order to keep the lights on at the House of Ideas. Becoming a box office hit turned things around, though. Being bought by an even bigger juggernaut in Disney changed things even more. Disney had the clout to work with Sony and even bring Spider-Man home. When it came to the outstanding rights of the Fantastic Four and the X-Men, however, the 800-pound Disney simply absorbed the rights holder Fox. While introducing characters like Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four are relatively easy prospects, the mutants provide a slightly tougher challenge. After a dozen years and two dozen movies not mentioning mutants, how do you integrate something that is so woven into the fabric of the Marvel Universe? While most eyes are on Wanda Maximoff and Doctor Strange and their multiverse meanderings, the Eternals might be the unlikely key to the X-Gene. The key lies in how the Eternals came about and what it might say about the mutants. One of the questions that begins to be asked, especially as the MCU wanders off Earth and into space, is what makes Earth so special that it manages to generate so many champions? It can't just be slightly dodgy scientific experiments, huh? Well, it turns out that there were a lot of fingers in the pie when it came to the development of our big blue marble. No group was more dedicated to dinking around with life than the powerful Celestials. So far, the Celestials have had a nominal presence in the MCU. The severed head of one of these titans is a shady trading post visited by the Guardians of the Galaxy, where the Collector told of the power they wielded with the Infinity Stones. Peter Quill found out he had a little Celestial in him when he found out that his dad was Ego the Living Planet, and for the MCU at least, a Celestial, who just so happened to look like Kurt Russell. When it comes to the Earth, the Celestial's contribution was to introduce a mutation in the budding life forms of Earth. While that mutation didn't create mutants in the way we know them in Marvel, they did create a mutation known as the Deviants, which really just sounds like a mean thing to call mutants. One constant in the Marvel Universe is, if your first experiment creates a world-threatening menace, your second attempt will clean that up for you. Accidentally create a super murder android? Try again and that android will destroy the first one. Yeah, hopefully. Similarly, the Celestials created the Eternals to stem the problem of the Deviants setting in motion an eternal war between these two species of super beings. So how do the Eternals introduce mutants to the MCU? Well, the short answer is that the Deviant gene continued to develop in the same way that regular evolution does. If the Deviant gene produces a Deviant, an offshoot of those variations could develop into mutants that share a distinct and unique set of characteristics that separate them from Deviants, in the same way two species can share a common ancestor. There is some indication that the MCU is already tweaking the origins of the Eternals with promotional material, referring to them as aliens instead of uplifted beings from Earth. The Eternals, though, have the same questions to answer as the mutants. Just why did they sit out Thanos and the Snap? Well, the Eternals have a rule about non-interference in human affairs. The theory is that the Celestials are threatening to return, meaning that the Eternals have to take a more active hand. The return could also be a result of all that snapping and rewriting the universe that may have released the Celestials from a prison they were put in when those people the Collector talked about used the Infinity Stones. This could have also broken the seal on mutants who could have been living in secret the entire time, or have been shifted off to an alternate reality to contain the wider spread of the Deviant mutation without turning innocent mutants into Eternals foes. The Eternals was originally slated to have come out in November of 2020 before, well, <laughs> you know which means it could have been meant to lay the groundwork for the fraying barriers between those realities and the consequences of just snapping reality all around willy-nilly. With the new release date of next November, it'll follow WandaVision but still be ahead of the reality-smashing Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, so that Prelude can still be in effect. 
Is this where our MCU parents have hidden the X-Men present? Is this the final piece to set up House of M and mutants in the MCU? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, be sure to subscribe to CBR for the latest videos in your inbox. Thanks for watching.